Hallelujah. As my brother said, we are coming to an end. Some of you sitting on the stairs, you have heard us for a while. It's about time you have to make decision. Yes. Listen, you won't get us to preach to you over and over and just come and have fun. These are precious hours. Anytime you hear the gospel, you are close to the kingdom of God. Anytime you hear a preacher, you are a step away from entering into the kingdom of God. And anytime you shut your ears, you are getting further and further away from the kingdom of God. Now, I want to read the scripture to you. This is not my, my own words. This is the scripture the Lord Jesus said. And I will tell you why I'm reading this to you. It's written in the book of Luke chapter 11 verse 31 to 32. The book of Luke. It is so important that it was also repeated in the book of Matthew. It says, The queen of the south will arise in the judgment with the people of this age and generation and condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to listen to the wisdom of Solomon. And notice, here is a more than Solomon. Here is a man more than Solomon. The men of Nineveh will appear as witnesses at the judgment with the, this generation and will condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, there is more than Jonah standing over here. Hallelujah. The book of Matthew repeats the same thing. Matthew chapter 12, verse 41 to 42. It says, the men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, someone more greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south, Queen Sheba, will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. You ask me why am I saying this? When Queen Sheba lived, Jesus wasn't physically over here. Jesus existed before he became man. Queen Sheba just visited Solomon because he heard he's a wise man. She went there to listen to him, and after she has listened to him, she gave her life to the God of Israel. The reason why Jesus referred to this woman is that when she heard about Solomon, she traveled all the way to go and find out. Now, Jesus says that generation who refused to listen to him this queen will rise up in judgment. It means everyone that has ever lived before, you will stand before God in judgment. Today you think you don't care, you don't give a toss about this religious stuff. As long as you have lived under the earth, you will stand in judgment. You are not free, you are not safe. Let me read another scripture to you. I have come to provoke you. I know some of you don't like my provocation. But I will keep on provoking you until you come to Jesus. Amen. Until you come to Jesus. I won't tell you goody, goody, goody stuff. I won't tell you goody, goody, goody stuff. You want goody, goody thing. There is a judgment. As long as you have lived under this earth, you will stand before God in judgment. There will be no asking for you. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is why we are here. We love you. We don't hate you. We tell you good stuff. What they have hidden from you. As long as, listen, I hear Jesus says, the Queen of England will arise and will condemn all those in England who refuse to touch the Bible. If Jesus can refer to the Queen of Sheba, he will refer to the royal family. Because they gave you the Bible. King James picked a royal family money. King James, a king in this country, took a royal family money. And they printed the Bible for the whole of the world. Have you read it before? The royal family will not be guilty of your sins before God. And I applaud them. Somebody tell the queen for me. I applaud her. Every December, she will stand on the national TV and tell you that this is the Christian nation. This is the Christian nation. Forget about the politicians. As long as the queen, the royal family has declared this country a Christian nation, it is a Christian nation. Amen. And because of that, God will judge every British, 
based on that, hallelujah. King James, big royal money and printed the Bible. The Bible is good for everybody, including every British. I want to tell you, your national anthem, your very national anthem says, God bless the queen. In your national anthem, God is referred. What betrays you if you are living in the United Kingdom and you call yourself a British and you have nothing to do with God? And you have nothing to do? I'm serious. You are in trouble. The Queen has put you, all of you in trouble. King James has put every British in trouble with God. Because in judgment, King James returned Jesus, I gave them the Bible. <laughs> King James will say, I'm, I'm innocent of their blood. They told that foolishness. King James will stand in judgment against every British. Are you a British? Even if you are not a British and you live in England, you will not be guilty. You will not go free. I will tell you the way it is. If the Queen of Sheba will rise in judgment, oh, her royal majesty. Her royal majesty will rise in judgment and all of you will be condemned. You better repent. Repent. The Bible says, for God so love you. The queen will say, God, now I told them every year, how long? Over 50 years. I told them this is a Christian nation. I told them they decided to live foolishly. They will sing, God bless me. And God, you bless me. Oh, that's why the queen is living long. Hello, Her Majesty. Wherever you are, God bless you. But all of you are in trouble. If you live without Jesus, you are in trouble. Your national anthem will be sung on the day of resurrection. Your national anthem. God, you say God bless the queen. God blesses. That's why she's living long. Because anytime you sing the national anthem, you are giving her more life. And they will live long. They gave us the Bible. The Bible is a blessing, it's not a curse. The Bible. Are you living? Hello, are you a British? Embrace yourself. If you don't turn to God, King James and Her Royal Majesty, they will wash their hands off. They will tell God, I told them. I told them, I told them, it's not my fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. People of Britain, anytime you sing your national anthem, you are telling God that he existed. Forget about the foolish things they talk about in university. Crazy stuff. There is a God. There is a God who rules in the affairs of men. There is a God, the God that built some people. You are introducing some foolish God in this country. Strange God. We don't even know his name. God's name is Jehovah. There is only one true God, and he has a son. If your God doesn't have a son, it's a foolish God. Foolish God. I want the God that can identify with me. I want the God who is a father. Jesus said, when you pray, say, our Father. Oh, God is a Father. God, somebody say, God is a Father. God is a Father. God is not a fatherless God. Stop, stop, stop worshiping that foolish God and come to Jesus. He is a Father. He understands you. They have introduced you to an idol. Woe betrays you. If you are living in the United Kingdom and you are living without God, you have no excuse. We will tell you the way it is. But God loves you. Come to God and leave. God is the only hope for this nation. God is the only hope for this nation. Forget about the politicians. What did they know? What did they know? They themselves need salvation. Anytime you pray, you say, God, give the queen victory. What about you? God will give you victory over alcohol. He will give you victory over smoking. He will give you victory over lesbianism. Hello? Then nobody should come and attack me. Go and read Leviticus chapter 18. 
Hello, God is not as afraid of your sexual life. God is not. God created the sexual organs. Go and read Leviticus 18. Hello, everybody. Go and read Leviticus 18. It will tell you, it will tell you how you should make love. Leviticus 18. Hello? You think God is afraid? All this perversion, they are evil. God has given standards. God created that organ for you. But he has given guidelines. You cannot just make love to anything else. Are we animals? No. Even things animals do not do. They have reduced us to animals. Who refuse? Young people refuse. You have conscience. Go and read it. Leviticus. Hello. I challenge you. Leviticus chapter 18. Go and read. It will tell you what God says about sex. God is not afraid. And stop living that perverse life. God loves you. Me, my concern is the queen and the royal family has put all of you in trouble. <laughs> they have given you the Bible. They have given you a national anthem. You are in serious trouble. But if you turn to Jesus, if you turn to Jesus, this Jesus you don't know, he became man because of you. He became man. Jesus wasn't a man. The Lord bless you. I've come to provoke you. The religious people in this country didn't tell you what we are telling you. Any religion that will tell you God hasn't got a son, keep that religion. God has got a son. God is a father. God is not a fatherless God. And because he's a father, he loves you. He knows how to relate with you. He said, come unto me, all you that... Listen, who told you? Stealing is a burden. God, if God can heal a leprous, if God can set a thief free, no matter your sexual perversion, and he said perversion, say perversion. If God heal a leper, gave sight to the blind, he can heal your sexual perversion. Who told you? God changed a prostitute. God changed a prostitute. There was a prostitute by name called Rahab. She prostituted herself. When men were using her left and right, she didn't know that she has keys in her womb. That prostitute, that prostitute who live on the walls, she became the grandmother of Jesus. Ooh, I love this. I love this. When women, when men were using her, when she was playing loose and she's going after the money and opening up to everybody, she didn't know King, King, King David is in the womb. She didn't know King Solomon is there. What are you doing on the wrong side? Who knows what you give birth to? Hello, young girl, stop that nonsense and find a man and marry. Young man, stop being a woman for another man. Foolishness. Find somebody and marry. Who knows what you give birth to? If Rahab can give birth to the Messiah, what about you? Do you know what you carry? Why are you living that loose life? Why are you living that stupid life they call pride? Pride my food. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. We are not condemning you. We are speaking sense into your head. Come on, huh? Come on. Come to Jesus. I love you. Listen, I'm not mean. I'm not mean. I'm not mean. I love you so much. It's the love of God that constrains us, okay? So if you live in Britain, it's not me. The royal family has put you into trouble. They're giving you Bible. Hello! They gave you Bible called King James Version. Yes. And the queen, this December, too, she will come and stand there. Heaven will bear witness. This country is a Christian country. You are in trouble. <laughs> God, save God save the queen. If God can save the queen, why not you? Shame on you. Why not you? God wants to save you too. God wants to save you. The God you have been singing about you don't know is the one we present to you. Yeah. He's a savior. He's a lover. He loves you. He sent Jesus to die for you. You will stand before him. You go ahead and wiggle, wiggle, wiggle your waist. <laughs> you will stand before him. The wiggling will go out of your head. You will realize what lies ahead. Listen, Jesus, he came because of sinners, okay? We have all sinned. I may not do the things you do, but I also do some stuff. 
I used to used to stand, sniff around looking for young girls. I, I also used to look go around, go around like some of you are doing. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. We love you. We'll see you next week. Now, if you have heard my voice, I didn't condemn you. I'm telling you reality. Ecclesiastes said the only one who is free from judgment of God is the one who is not born. If you live and die without Jesus, an aborted child is better than you. It will be better if your mother and father miscarried you. That's serious. Come. If you are here, we are here. We will pray with you. Nobody will tell you the truth like we do. We will tell you. We are not mean. We love you. There is a heaven to gain. And there is a hell to shine. Hallelujah. God loves you. Can somebody sing the national anthem for me? Can you sing the national anthem? It betrays you though. Anybody who can sing the national anthem. We salute the royal. Listen, I love the royal family. They will not be guilty of your sins. Like the Queen of Sheba. I will see the Queen of Sheba standing before God. And I'll see her royal majesty, the queen standing there, King James. And they'll say, God, look at all these people. I printed a Bible for them. My granddaughter also reminded them every year. But they didn't listen. So let them go. It will be sad. Sad. God bless all of you. Let's say this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive my sins. I am sorry for my sins. Please help me. Deliver me from this oppression of sin. Forgive me. Cleanse me with your blood that was shed on Calvary. Cancel my name from book of death and write my name in the book of life. Give me your precious Holy Spirit to live in me to come upon me and let me live for you so that the day you will come I will not be ashamed save me Lord save me in Jesus name Amen if you have prayed this prayer with us you can draw near we will tell you more hallelujah what a wonderful sermon church let's come together let's pray hallelujah hallelujah as we always do, let's close in prayer. Hallelujah. Bishop, we're going to have Bishop, you know, minister to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to stop it? Hallelujah. Yeah, you're going to stop it. Yeah. We thank God.